Hi everyone, I'm Liz Brown Swanson and welcome to Around the Peninsula. Today I'm in the beautiful and historic Wayfarers Chapel. It is a jewel in our community. I'm sitting with the Director of Operations, Jim Morgan. So great to be here with you and a lot of excitement happening right now in the chapel. Obviously, this is a place people come for worship and for life celebrations. And today for a concert, we have the Penny Royal Players that will be here and right. lots going on always, right? This is where it's happening. This is it. Uh, we get about 400,000 visitors a year um, just to come and enjoy the grounds and the chapel. It's, uh, a world-renowned chapel and um, you know just uh, experience the spirituality that you find here it, it is amazing obviously um, it's on the National Historic Register it has so much going on the beauty the fact that we all know it was uh, designed by Lloyd Wright famous son of Frank Lloyd Wright son of Frank Lloyd Wright uh, it was built in 1951 um, it was actually the, the second uh, architect to work on it um, Ralph Jester was the first uh, who built uh, or designed a, uh, a classic mission style building uh, with all uh, bricks and mortar, but um, he asked his friend uh, Lloyd Wright to come up with something that fitted the space a little better, so this is the brilliance that uh, Lloyd Wright came up with. A lot of people, we know this, they call it the glass chapel, but it really is the tree chapel. Yes, uh, we're <laughs> surrounded by uh, redwood trees. Uh, Lloyd Wright got his inspiration in Northern California, and uh, so you can see it. All around the chapel, we have uh, chapel grounds. Outside the chapel are like a forest, forest lawn. It, it is incredibly peaceful and relaxing. You've been on board here almost two years. Yes. You grew up in this community, so this this is a special place. It's exciting to be back. Uh, you know, even as a teenager coming here, you know, to, you know, it's a special place. Uh, just to be in here, uh, you're inside a chapel, but you also feel like you're outside. You can see hawks flying overhead. Uh, you know, squirrels running up and around the trees. Uh, it's a fantastic place. Give us a little history, more history about the fact this chapel was built 60 years ago. The cornerstone was laid in 49. The cornerstone was laid in 1949. Uh, the land was donated by uh, the Vanderlip family, mm -hmm. uh, in particular uh, Narcissa Vanderlip, uh, who was also uh, a Swedenborgian. And, uh, so they donated the land and uh, Lloyd Wright built it. It was finished in 1951. And uh, as you can see, there are no right angles in the, uh, the chapel. Uh, and it, it's specific to organic architecture where it's built like a tree. You won't see uh, 90 degree angles in a tree. I'm curious, you know, you've, you, you came on board, uh, like you said, almost two years ago. And uh, the gentleman that you replaced, Harvey Toffel, was also a legend of community. He was here for decades. Um, so, big shoes to fill. So what's happening in your new setup? You're a director of operations, but you also have a director of ministry now and the director of finance. So you sort of have a triad right. uh, that runs the chapel. Right. The three of us work together uh, as a group uh, to come up with the decisions, the best decisions for the chapel. And it's working fantastic because you have, you know, the ministry, you have somebody with operations and program, and then you have the finance coming together to, to make sure we make the best decisions for the chapel. One of the things we're doing now is uh, developing funds. We need to raise funds to do a comprehensive study to make sure that uh, the Abalone Cove slide area does not impact the chapel. Um, it has taken the uh, old visitor center right. over a decade ago and went down the canyon. So we got to make sure we preserve this, but that's about $160,000 that we need to raise for so that's a, a what project you're, that's like that. So that's your number one priority for you right now and your team right, here. Right, is, is to make sure that chapel is preserved for future generations. Yeah, and when you're on the grounds here and you reference the visitor center, which was replaced, that is a center, truly, of what, what's happening here. And, you know, talk about the role that center has. When people come on the grounds, they obviously want to come in this chapel first, but then they make their way to the visitor center. Right. Well, they they, they know about the chapel. Uh, again, you can see it online, uh, but you have to come here to experience it. And uh, the visitor center has uh, a lot of educational opportunities, the history behind it, history behind uh, the Swedenborgians, and um, it's a, a great great place to learn about the, the chapel and the history of it. And you mentioned the Swedenborgians. It's a Christian denomination. For people that don't know, what is that? Uh, it's a Christian denomination uh, based on writings by uh, um, Emanuel Swedenborg, and uh, he was a, a scholar, a, a scientist, and a, a mystic who um, seemed to uh, just really Every everything was based on his writings. Um, although Wayfarer's Chapel itself is an ecumenical ministry, meaning that uh, we're 
uh, inclusive. We're an inclusive ministry. Anybody can get married here. Anybody can get baptized here. Of any faith or no faith. Um, and we welcome all to experience their own spirituality. Here. Which is the fact that it's for the Wayfarer. That was really the intent, right? A place right. for anyone to come of any background and pause. Wayfarers or travelers. Some of the things uh, that a lot of people who actually know the chapel don't know is uh, our bylaws do not allow us to have a congregation or congregational membership, which makes it a little more challenging to raise funds to do special projects around here. But it really was, I think, a far-thinking effort to be inclusive for mm -hmm. everybody and all of humanity. So there's no membership at the Wayfarers. No. You just come and... and no, it's um, for everybody. But one, what you're certainly definitely known for is the wedding chapel. And I think people out there think there's no way we can get married there because they're book solid. Is, that, is there any truth to that? If people are out there watching, they want to get married in this, this wonderful place. Well, uh, as you can see, uh, you won't find a more beautiful chapel anywhere to get married. Uh, so it's, it's understandable that we do have a lot of weddings here. But that's only a small part of what we do. You know, we do... Uh, we have a full ministry with counseling, with uh, baptisms. We have a baptismal font uh, over there. Um, we do memorials, and uh, we have a couple special projects that we're really developing. Uh, and our board has come up with a, a vision that, you know, our vision is not to be a wedding chapel. It's to be a spiritual center, a uh, place for opportunities and experiences for spiritual transformation for everybody. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we're really moving in that direction. Right. It's a place for life celebrations. You can come here on Wednesdays and just there's a prayer service. Uh, isn't there on there's Wednesdays? There's a prayer service uh, Wednesdays at noon. Talk about what you do offer a lot to the community. Like we said, we opened up the show right now. The Penny Royal Players, a wonderful group of musicians, are going to be performing here. It's a great venue to have a concert in because the acoustics are flawless. Oh, there it's fantastic. We had the Yale Alley Cats here in a cappella group, and it was just a phenomenal, phenomenal concert. Uh, but we're also developing a speaker series, live stream speaker series uh, about spirituality, and uh, that should start this summer here at Wayfarer's Chapel. Okay, we're going to take a short break. I mentioned the Penny Royal Players, who I'll be staying for the concert, looking forward to that. We're going to talk to some of the musicians in the group and find out exactly why they love being part of the Wayfarers. Well, it's a long and dusty road. It's a hard and a heavy load. Oops, I need a ways kind. Some of that and some of This is a magnificent place to perform. It just really puts you in the mood with, uh, with nature all around you. And our play is about this particular play. We have several, but this one is about the pioneers and somehow this natural setting with the trees really fits it so beautifully. It's very peaceful. And you've been part of this community a long time. What role do you see the chapel playing in the community? Oh my gosh. Well, we, you know, we perform in the community, and we started in the community, the Norris, and uh, this, is, this is here also. It's just an absolutely wonderful place to perform. And what do you love about being with these women and doing this show? We've become like family. We're like sisters. What do you love so much about performing here? This is your third time in the chapel. I have a, a very passionate relationship with Wayfarers Chapel, as I think most people enter this space and... Um, feel it as a holy place. Um, my nephew has a, um, a block with his name on it out back in, on the Walk of Honor. The chapel allows people to commemorate their loved ones by allowing us to make a donation to purchase a, a paver. It's a wonderful way to honor a loved one or to commemorate um, an anniversary or a wedding. What will the audience expect tonight? What are you going to show them? Oh, I think the audience is always surprised, just as we are, because every performance is a little different. Our stories constantly are updated, and we get stories from our audience members, which we fold into the script. So it's a living document in many, many ways. As I said to Joan, you perform hundreds of times throughout the community, and uh, you donate money. 
Yes, and actually speaking of the numbers, we we finally stopped tracking, but I think by now we're we're definitely over 550 or so performances. So we're very very busy, and uh, we have donated. It's close to about eighty thousand dollars. That's directly to charity, and then in addition to that, we uh, we offer performances to the community, and this is one of the performances we are donating today. Jim, all the women in Penny Royal Players, fabulous musicians, entertainers, local, and do such great work in the community. How do you decide who's going to come into the chapel? And, and if people are watching and they'd like to perform here, how, do, how can they, they should contact you? Uh, they should contact me. Uh, we're very supportive of local uh, organizations and, and local uh, bands uh, that would like to perform here in the chapel. It's part of our outreach efforts uh, for the community. Let's move a little bit forward as you look into the future of the chapel, sort of some of your more of your goals and challenges uh, again some of the goals are making sure that um, uh, our image out there is not as you mentioned the wedding chapel mm -hmm. you know weddings are an integral part of the ministry but we don't want it to define us we want it to um, be a spiritual center for everybody who wants to come and uh, you know uh, develop their own spirituality here. right and, and our board, again, developed a great new vision. Uh, I don't know if I can say it uh, verbatim, but uh, we'll be an incubator for uh, educational and global opportunities for spiritual transformation. Very nice. So, like you were saying, you're working on a lecture series coming up. Uh, the lecture series is part of that. Uh, We'll be live streaming uh, different speakers. And again, if somebody wanted to be a speaker, uh, they would contact me um, about spirituality and things like that. All right. What do you enjoy most about what you do here? Uh, I believe it's part of being a very special place uh, on this planet. I mean, uh, how many chapels do not have a congregation who are built exclusively for everybody? Mm -hmm. uh, it's a very special place, and you can't beat a, or find a more beautiful place anywhere. It is a very special place. And uh, you've got some more exciting events coming up. For example, one, one um, thing that happens here is wedding renewal and that's in June so couples out there should pay attention what, what happens here I mean everyone that says they want to get married on the, at the Wayfarers this is your chance uh, <laughs> right this is their chance even if you weren't married here you're welcome to come here and do uh, be part of our wedding uh, renewal service uh, and to reiterate your vows and really bring you back to uh, the same sort of uh, relationship that you had when you first got married we also have a, a real exciting uh, blessing of the animals which is a real hoot and that's in july right? that's in july uh, it's where you can bring your pet here dog cat turtle snake or whatever <laughs> Uh, and we have a service, and uh, the minister can bless uh, each of the animals afterwards, and it is a lot of fun. Now, you mentioned the ministers. Dave Brown, he's the director of ministry, and he's been on board for quite some time. He, he's been on board for quite some time, uh, and he's our lead minister and part of the leadership group. Uh, but we also have uh, six ministers that help us out with uh, different events and weddings and things like that. So we can do more uh, than weddings. We can do ministerial uh, mm -hmm. other things, counseling and things like that. Now, I know we came today, we were, we were hoping that we were going to catch up with uh, Reverend Dave Brown. We weren't able to do that, but we did. A, we were able to talk to the director of finance, who's part of your right. triad. Um, and, uh, of course, that is Shannon Reynolds. We're going to take another quick break, and we're going to talk to Shannon, who is from Palos Verde. She's part of this community, and she's been part of the chapel for um, nearly two decades. So we'll take a break. I came to the chapel 16 years ago uh, part-time, bookkeeper, and my career kind of grew from there. And uh, uh, the reason I came uh, was the flexibility, and I could fit that in with my family business, which was another business in Palos Verde's Moore's Market. And then it grew from there. That became a full-time job. And then when Reverend Harvey Toffel retired uh, two years ago, they asked me to step up to the director of finance. And what are the challenges for you in doing that job? Oh, challenges are filling some very big shoes. <laughs> uh, 
now we're working as a triad. There's three of us. Uh, Director of Ministry is Reverend David Brown. Director of uh, Operations is James Morgan and myself. So now as a triad, we're working together uh, instead of having just one person in charge. So it's, it's a, a collaborative effort. And a, and a growing team. Over six years this chapel's played a role in the community. What is the role you see it serving? Uh, I see it as a center in the community for people to come to and moments of happiness and more moments of sadness to find comfort and serenity and perhaps a, uh, a loving arm to reach out to them. Uh, it's a place of celebration for the happy things in life, uh, baptisms and memorials, and I feel that it's a true, true center for our lovely community. Right. Back to your job as Director of Finance, you have to deal with the money. A lot of people, I think, don't realize that for one, this chapel you know, needs the support of the community because it is for the Wayfair, there is no membership here. No, there so there's always the challenge about bringing dollars in. Yes, that is a very big challenge. The community sees us as a wedding chapel, which we're trying to break that image. And I think they see it as self-sustaining because of that, but they don't realize what it takes to run and maintain the beautiful church, which is made of many panes of glass, the gorgeous gardens, uh, our staff and our buildings and grounds. And it does require quite a bit of, of, uh, of money to take care of those things. Do you have an incredible team here with Shannon, Dave, and, and everybody that's, how big is the team that you work with, by the way? Uh, well, the, it's the three of us, right. the, the leadership team, right. But, but we as have far as, tw about 26 employees. So you've got a nice force, but what really is helpful is the community. There's lots of opportunities to volunteer as well. Right, we have volunteer opportunities, and uh, we have a number of projects going on that uh, uh, people can get involved with. Uh, for example, we're changing the, uh, the front lawn in front of the chapel is right now Ivy. But Lloyd Wright actually designed a garden with uh, the exact names of all the, uh, the plants that he would like there. So we'd like to transform the front uh, back to Lloyd Wright's original design and people can be involved with that uh, either through donating or helping us plant those. So that's a really big big project you've got and so people should contact you and go on to the website at wayfareschapel.org. Right. That's a good way. All right, anything you want as we wrap up here again? You're the guy in charge and you have what a beautiful place to be. Uh, you, you can't beat it. Uh, again, feel free to call me if you have any questions or visit us uh, on our website. All right. We'll look forward to the show tonight with Penny Royals as well. We're excited to hear him. All right. Jim Morgan, always wonderful to be here in the Wayfarers Chapel. That'll do it for this issue of Around the Peninsula. I'm Liz Brown Thompson. Hope to see you here in this beautiful chapel and see you next time.